Today, I'd like to also talk about Bayesian optimization, but uh, uh, for two days, uh, professors uh, explain uh, Bayesian optimization very uh, deeply. So today, I'd like to focus on practical application for uh, actual experiment using actual experimental data. So this is the content of my uh, talk and the tutorial. Uh, after the introduction of page optimization, I'd like to share you our application results uh, for uh, actual uh, crystal growth experiments. <laughs> after the lunch, I'd like to uh, form a tutorial uh, one day to the uh, page optimizations. Okay, so let me start with a uh, brief introduction of the page um, optimization and machine learning. As we studied in this winter uh, school, uh, we can make a, a prediction model using uh, our data. For example, if we have a large data, we can make a prediction model. Uh, for example, uh, for the uh, crystal growth of same films, uh, we have uh, when we have a data set between uh, process conditions and results of experiments, uh, such as macroscopic material properties, we can make a prediction model to predict the uh, material properties from experimental conditions. However, uh, most of cases, uh, we want to know the process condition that minimizes the uh, properties. So this means the uh, inverse problem of prediction models. Uh, the machine learning model, uh, input parameter of machine learning pro model is process conditions. The output parameter of machine learning uh, model are uh, properties, but we want to know the uh, process conditions that minimize uh, properties. So uh, this is the inverse problem of machine learning model. Uh, to solve this inverse problem, one method is optimization. This is a typical structure uh, to solve inverse problem using machine learning model. First, we have a data set. Then we perform regression using machine learning model. Using this machine learning model, we can obtain the uh, optimized condition here. It should be emphasized that the uh, calculation speed, prediction speed of machine learning is very fast. So we can obtain uh, this condition in a very short time. Uh, this is the advantage of uh, machine learning application. For this uh, flowchart, we have to uh, consider uh, that optimization results depend on regression and optimization methods. For example, even though we use the same data set, difference of regression model using nonlinear model or linear model, we obtain different uh, of obtain uh, optimized result. For example, in the case of nonlinear model, the optimized condition is here, but in the case of linear model, opti optimized condition is here. Also, even though we use the same uh, machine learning model, depending on the optimization method, the result uh, changes. For example, by using exhaustive search, 
we check the value of prediction value everywhere, we can find the uh, optimized condition here. But when we use gradient method <coughs> with the initial condition at the center of parameter range, the optimized condition is here. So uh, we have to consider the <coughs> uh, which regression model also we uh, which uh, optimization method we used. Okay, so uh, let me move to the uh, Bayesian optimization. The theme of uh, this session is small data. So small data means limitation of the number of experiments. We want to reduce the uh, cost of optimization. We want to reduce the experiment the number of experiments. As in the case of uh, previous optimization, uh, finally we got uh, this optimized condition. But from the viewpoint of optimized result, these data are not effective for the optimization. So we want to allocate these resources to more important area. By using this, we can reduce the number of experiments. This is the idea of uh, active learning, uh, the um, uh, Bayesian optimization. One method to do this is sequential optimization. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, uh, the, <laughs> the font is uh, not correct, but uh, so uh, let me imagine. First, we start small number of data. In this case, we have only three data, and we perform regression. <coughs> From the results of this regression, we uh, the regression suggests here may be low. So we perform experiments and the measurement at this condition. Then uh, this data point is uh, added to the uh, data, again, we perform regression. Then uh, the regression results suggest that uh, here may be low. So next, we perform experiments and measurement at this condition. Uh, by repeating this uh, sequence, finally, we can obtain the global optimization <coughs> results. The Bayesian optimization is one of the method for sequential optimization. Also, uh, I'd like to uh, demonstrate the Bayesian optimization in one dimensional optimization. Uh, this is a true function that we don't know. We just know the uh, data points. Please imagine, we just don't know, we can see only this data point. We cannot see this true function. Then we perform Gaussian process regression. The broken line shows the regression results uh, of Gaussian process regression. As told, about, uh, told in this winter seminar, uh, Gaussian process regression uh, can provide not only prediction results, but also pre prediction uncertainty. Uh, this blue band shows the prediction accuracy. We can see uh, the blue band become narrow and around the data points, and the between the data points, the blue band uh, become wider. So uh, this means that uh, prediction 
uncertainty is large in the in this area. By using this information, vision optimization can balance exploitation that is uh, that prefer uh, <coughs> conditions with better prediction value, predicted value, and and exploitation that prefer conditions not yet measured. Uh, there are several acquisition functions. Uh, in the case of LCB, lower confidence band uh, correspond to the uh, lower lines of blue band here. So the uh, lowest position of this lower band is here. So next measurement condition is uh, this value, this x value. Then we perform the experiment and we get uh, this data point and we add uh, this point on in the data set. Again, we perform a Gaussian process regression and we calculate the acquisition function LCB. The next lowest point is here. So we perform uh, next measurement uh, here. By repeating this, finally, we have found the, the condition that minimize y value. So this is the typical <laughs> sequence of vision optimization. Uh, after the lunch, we will do this process in the tutorial code. Okay, so uh, I'd like to um, show you. Sorry, how, uh, there's a question in the chat. Uh, yeah, 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 can, yeah. Can we interrupt you? Yeah. So, can you? Um, the question was um, if you could elaborate more um, on the small data set you generate data by sequential optimization to expand the data set, how this works. Uh, uh, so, excuse me. Um, <laughs> this was the question. Oh, sorry, sorry. You have a small data set. You generate data by sequential to expand the data set. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, active learning is the method to, to add the data. So uh, this is a yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So, uh, so I'd like to show you our application to actual uh, experiments. Well, firstly, I'd like to show application to two-dimensional spatial mapping of microbeam XRD measurement. So this is the optical uh, system of our experiment. Uh, we used uh, forecast X-ray beam uh, from a, a synchrotron facility uh, focused to one millimeter, uh, one micrometer in diameter. And then we capture the diffraction patterns using two dimensional detector. In this setup, uh, by moving the sample in Y and X direction, we can perform the mapping of XRD pattern, uh, XRD patterns. For this uh, application, we tested a silicon germanium film on silicon substrate. We intentionally made a, a silicon germanium film with very large fluctuation in orientation and compositions in micrometer order. And we analyze the two-dimensional diffraction patterns. In this pattern, we evaluate the composition and orientation of the silicon germanium films. The object of this uh, mapping is to find the most tilted position, most oriented position. After the finding the position, we perform long 
time measurement at this position. So we want to uh, quickly find most tilted oriented position. So we apply Bayesian optimization to find the uh, position. So we constructed uh, automatic measurement system. Uh, this is the sequence of uh, measurement. First, we measure the diffraction pattern and calculated the, the uh, tilt angle, uh, crystal tilt angle. Then we perform Bayesian optimization and uh, Bayesian optimization uh, suggested the next measurement position. And we move it to the sample to that position and measure uh, diffraction pattern again. By repeating this, uh, finally, we obtained most treated position. Right hand side animation is the uh, procedure of this uh, cycle. White points shows the measured position and uh, counter plot shows the predicted, uh, predicted value of crystal orientations. As can be seen, firstly, the measurement point distribute uh, homogeneously, but Uh, so finally, the measurement points distribute around uh, higher uh, tilted area here. So uh, this means that uh, measurement resources focused on this area. So we effectively uh, found the uh, appropriate uh, positions. So these two figures show the uh, results of Bayesian optimization and the results of uh, mesh grid mapping of the uh, crystal orientation. So uh, this is the ground truth of the crystal orientation mapping. By comparing these two mappings, we found that we actually uh, found high uh, crystal oriented points here. But it should be noted that as an area, uh, Bayesian optimization does not uh, predict it uh, precisely. Uh, there is a big difference between these two <coughs> distributions. It should be noted that uh, uh, Bayesian optimization is an uh, uh, optimization method, not for uh, global predictions. So uh, it should be noted, but uh, by using Bayesian optimization, we can significantly reduce the measurement points. For example, in this case, uh, to find high detailed position, we uh, use only uh, 48 uh, points. But in this case, uh, mesh grid uh, mapping, we need 961 points. So we can uh, significantly reduce the uh, measurement resources. Okay, so let me move to the another applications. So we apply Bayesian optimization to hydrogen plasma treatment. Uh, as you know, uh, passivation film of solar cell is very important to increase the performance of solar cells. And hydrogen plasma treatment of uh, passivation film is one of the methods to increase the passivation uh, performance. But in the hydrogen plasma treatment process, uh, there are many process parameters. In this case, uh, there are uh, six process parameters, uh, temperature, process time, 
uh, hydrogen pressure, hydrogen flow rate, uh, uh, power of radio frequency, and electron to distances. So it is difficult to simultaneously uh, optimize these six process parameters. So we used a Bayesian optimization. The objective function is the effective lifetime, carrier lifetime. So right-hand side figure show the uh, history of increase in the uh, carrier lifetime, effective carrier lifetime. For this experiment, first uh, 10 experiments were randomly selected in the parameter space as initial uh, data set. From 11th uh, measurement, we used Bayesian optimization. As can be seen here, uh, by using Bayesian optimization, finally, we obtained very high uh, carrier lifetime values. <laughs> and uh, this figure showed the uh, prediction of uh, carrier lifetime in the cross section of the parameter space. The uh, pressure and temperature are uh, most effective uh, parameters for uh, carrier lifetime. So we evaluate the uh, carrier lifetime distribution, predicted carrier lifetime distribution across these. Uh, parameter spaces. So uh, this figure shows the uh, prediction results at the <coughs> tenth, uh, after the 10 experiments. So at this timing. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Gaussian process uh, so the very, very, uh, very flat <laughs> uh, uh, predictions. But as increasing in the measurement points, the uh, prediction results become very, uh, show very narrow, uh, narrow high area and also measurement, we can see measurement points distribute around uh, this high uh, carrier lifetime area. So uh, again, I'd like to emphasize that uh, by using page optimization, we can uh, focus more uh, our measurement resources in the important area like these figures. Okay, so let me move to the uh, much higher uh, parameter <laughs> optimizations. In this case, we optimize the grinding process of silicon carbide wafers. As you know, uh, silicon carbide is uh, much harder than silicon, so it is difficult to uh, to optimize the grinding process conditions. In this case, we have uh, five uh, parameters: uh, moving speed and rotation speed of uh, silicon uh, silicon carbide foil, dresser foil, and grinding foils. Also, we have the parameters of uh, hardness and roughness of grinding foils. The object, we have two objective parameters. One is processing speed. We want to increase the processing speed to increase the productivity. And also, we want it to reduce the surface roughness we have two objective parameters. So uh, by applying uh, Bayesian optimization, this system, we, in, we 
try to obtain appropriate condition, grinding conditions. For this experiment, we firstly, we prepare 27 experiments uh, at random conditions. Then we uh, perform the Bayesian optimization totally 32 times. So this figure shows the <coughs> uh, plots at uh, objective parameters, surface roughness and grinding speed. As I told, we wanted to reduce the surface roughness and increase the grinding speed. So uh, this direction is better. And uh, black square shows the results of standard conditions. This plot shows the initial uh, data, uh, results of initial data obtained by random conditions. So there are no data points in this target zone. This means that by random sampling, like random sampling, we cannot reach the uh, appropriate condition. It takes very it needs very large amount of experiments. So uh, this number shows the number of Bayesian optimization. <coughs> Firstly, we obtained much higher greening speed results with almost the same uh, surface roughness with standard conditions. We were very surprised. And also, at the fifth results of vision optimization, we obtain 10 times higher cleaning speed condition with almost same surface darkness. So, and uh, these are results of vision optimizations. As you can see, most of plots of vision optimization distribute in the beta region of initial conditions. So this is uh, this also suggests that uh, Bayesian optimization uh, successfully uh, efficiently uh, explore uh, better conditions. <laughs> okay, so uh, in the uh, last of my talk, I'd like to uh, share of very complicated uh, practical case, epitaxial growth of silicon. In this case, we have 12 uh, process parameters, such as temperature of substrate uh, heaters, uh, gas flow conditions, uh, flux of uh, gases, and uh, configurations, uh, position and rotation speed of substrates. Also, we have many objective parameters. We wanted to increase the uh, growth rate of epitaxial film, and we wanted to decrease the uh, crystal quality uh, parameters, such as uh, thickness uniformity, resistivity uniformity, uh, defect densities. So uh, for this optimization, we uh, performed totally uh, more than 300 experiments. And uh, approximately half of experiments we used to initial, to make initial data set with random conditions. But uh, for this, Optimization, uh, Bayesian optimization suggests uh, explore new experiment, experimental condition that we have never tried. So there are many unexpected errors. 
uh, mainly we have two errors. What error one is uh, we get many in uh, random sampling initial uh, to make initial data set. When uh, error occurs, this data cannot be used. So we want to suppress error by for error A, by analyzing the uh, data results, we find that relationship between uh, process parameter and error. So we uh, limit the uh, process parameter range. So we can suppress, almost suppress this error A. But as proceeded, in page optimization, another error occurred, error B. Also, we performed same analysis to error B, but we could not find uh, clear relationship between uh, process parameter and error B. So we uh, analyze uh, other sensor values and we found uh, one sensor value uh, strongly related to this error B. So we made a prediction model of sensor value and used it as constraint for Bayesian optimization. After the using the uh, constraint, uh, we have no uh, error B. So uh, this constraint uh, works very well. Another problem is uh, measurement time. In, uh, in the general Bayesian optimization, the number of experiments is limited. Priority is number of experiments. But in this application, the uh, time period for optimization is limited. We have to uh, find good condition within uh, several weeks, several months. So in this case, uh, we thought that increase of the number of data is effective to find the appropriate condition. So we analyze the uh, process time in one uh, Bayesian optimization cycle. This is the process time for one Bayesian optimization. After the experiment, we have to characterize the uh, quality of epitaxial filaments. We evaluate growth rate, thickness, uniformity, resistivity, uniformity, uh, particle densities, and uh, defect densities. As you can see, in, uh, then we uh, calculate the next <coughs> conditions. As you can see in this chart, most process parameter was uh, <coughs> uh, due to uh, characterizations. So we try to reduce this uh, time, process time. So we analyze the initial data set and we found that among these five uh, quality parameters, sickness uniformity is has uh, low evaluation cost. Uh, this means uh, uh, short uh, measurement time and high importance. High importance means uh, this is, uh, we, it is difficult to reduce sickness uniformity. So uh, we <coughs> try to uh, focus on uh, G2 parameter in procedure one and procedure two, 
we consider all these uh, quality parameters. So uh, this is the uh, acquisition function for procedure one and procedure two. And I don't want to uh, explain detail. So uh, this is the flow chart of the, our uh, Bayesian optimization. As I told, <laughs> depending on the situation, we selected procedure one, only consider two parameters, or we selected uh, procedure two, considering all the parameters. Also, in addition to these two procedures, we uh, use the procedure three, in which next experimental condition was uh, determined by experts. The effect of this procedure three will be discussed uh, later. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we used adaptively uh, three procedures. So uh, vision optimization has a, a very large flexibility. Uh, vision optimization uh, does not care the source of data set. So we can use uh, several uh, different procedures in one vision optimization. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this showed the uh, results of uh, our experiment. Horizontal axis shows the ratio of sickness uniformity to the goal. We want to reduce the uh, sickness uniformity. And uh, vertical axis shows the uh, ratio of uh, growth rate to the <coughs> conventional conditions. Uh, this star shows the standard results of standard condition. And our target zone is here. Blue points show the 160 points of the results of uh, initial data set. Also, in this case, there are no points in the target zone by the random sampling. This means that uh, it is difficult to find appropriate condition by random sampling. This is the result of Bayesian optimization. The color corresponds to the number of Bayesian optimization. As you can see, increasing in the number of Bayesian optimization, the plots shift to uh, in this direction. And finally, we got one uh, result in the target zone. So uh, this uh, showed that uh, by using a Bayesian optimization, we can <coughs> get uh, much better conditions. In addition to Bayesian optimization, we uh, performed uh, parameter search by experts. So uh, the star plots show the results of uh, exp uh, experimental condition uh, suggested by experts. This means that uh, experts have a, a scientific domain knowledge in very few uh, process parameters. Uh, scientists, uh, experts cannot consider simultaneously large number of uh, parameters, but we have uh, much deeper knowledge in small number of process parameters. So <clears throat> basing on the Bayesian optimization results, the experts uh, can, can, can predict uh, which direction, which parameter should be increased or decreased to get much more, uh, much better uh, results. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, in other words, uh, Bayesian optimization 
is good for global optimization in high dimensional space. And uh, fine tuning by experts is good for local optimization in low dimensional space. By combining these two optimization, uh, we succeeded in the in obtaining uh, very good results. And finally, we get uh, one time one point eight times higher growth rate. It is surprising. Uh, generally, to increase the growth rate, we have to change the configuration of furnace or uh, change, we have to change the growth method. But in this case, we just change the process conditions. Only by changing uh, process condition, uh, we succeeded in 1.8 times higher growth rate. Okay, so let me summarize uh, my talk. As I demonstrated by using Bayesian optimization, uh, much better result uh, we can obtain with a small number of experiments. And also, <laughs> I uh, told uh, not only uh, machine learning, but also uh, scientists, engineer knowledge will be helpful to get optimized the results. So uh, my message is collaboration between scientists and machine learning is will lead to further development in science and technology. Okay. So uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. This is the first talk about crystal grow, and maybe I can start <laughs> with uh, uh, questioning. So uh, could you? Please, as all of your examples were not about the bulk crystal growth, where do you see the, the feasibility of approach of this technique in bulk growth? Like, B bulk let's growth, say, yeah. Chokhasky silicon is the most popular, uh, most growth yeah, material. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, bulk growth is very similar to this uh, epitaxial growth, thin film growth, but there is big difficulty. Uh, bulk growth is uh, time dependence process. So we have to overcome such problem. But I think we can apply Bayesian optimization to bulk growth also. Uh, 